This is truly the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. This is Pastor Ron of Hope Healing and Harvest Ministries here in the city of Los Angeles. We want to thank you for joining this particular broadcast on today. The Word in Action broadcast here on Facebook and on YouTube. Let's open up in prayer on this morning. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name for this opportunity we have to come to you, uh, praying, oh God, that you would just bless our day on today. Lord, we just pray that our minds are clear and alert, that our ears are open to hear what you would have to say on to us on today. We are looking for clear instructions. We're asking you, Lord, to uh, make easy and successful our path on today. Praying for the needs of those listening, oh God, praying that you would just, uh, whatever they're staying in need of God, that you would do it for them in the name of Jesus. If they're one that needs to be healed, oh God, we pray healing in the name of Jesus. If they're one who needs hope, we're praying for hope, oh God. And we're also praying this morning for the harvest, oh God. Prepare the harvest field, oh God, that we may be able to connect with them and to bring them in. To give them hope and to make an atmosphere conducive to healing of whatever ails them. We know you to be the great physician on today. You can heal us of all of our diseases, and we give you praise. We give you honor, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to continue our series today as it relates to building, uh, developing, and maintaining healthy relationships. I'm so grateful that you're in my life because because you're in my life, there's something different I feel as if I actually have someone that I can trust, someone that I can communicate with, someone I can share my secrets with. As a matter of fact, every time I'm around you, it just feels like I can, uh, like like I can leap tall buildings. You give me strength. When I'm down, you call me. You give me inspiration. As a matter of fact, uh, you're the you're the reason I decided to go back to school. You're the reason I decided to. Go ahead and finally file that paperwork. Those are the types of people that I want in my life. And those are the relationships that I want to cultivate. So today, this is our part five. This is part five. Uh, we want to learn how to invest in others. How do we invest in others? Uh, my uncle, um, there are several members, well, my uncle specifically, uh, is an expert investor. He can analyze stocks and uh, investment opportunities, things of that nature, because he's been doing it for so long. And what he always has me thinking about, and we've had these conversations before, he's, uh, he says, if you're going to invest in something, don't look for short-term values because those are the riskiest investments you could ever make. If you're looking for a quick return, uh, don't uh, don't look for don't 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 go there. Don't do quick returns. Don't don't look for quick investments. Your the best investments that he recommends are long term investments because those are the ones that we get what we what he calls ROI. The best return on our investments are long-term investments. Short-term investments are risky. Short-term investments will get you in trouble. Now, short-term investments will get you quick money. Absolutely, it's a quick turnover. You just, but there's no benefit from, there's no long-term benefits from short-term investments. He says that all the time. My uncle will say all the time. There are no long-term benefits to short-term investments. You have short-term investments, those are the three, six, nine-month CDs that we that we used to sell at Bank of, that I used to uh, uh, deal with at Bank of America. Now, the best solid investments with the best interest rates, the ones who have the best ROI or the best return on my investment were long-term investments. I want to invest in people that invest in me. The best 
investments that people can make are those long term. We're in this for the long haul. I want to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and establish uh, a couple of scriptures here that I would want to share with you regarding long term or investing in others. How do we invest in others? This is the link for this. Oh, by the way, while I'm looking at it, this is going to be a two-part series on investing in others. Uh, this morning, this particular one, we're going to discuss how uh, how we can invest in others. The ways uh, uh, this is three ways that uh, we can invest in others. Are three areas that we can that we can develop uh, relationships, strengthen our relationships by investing in others. Uh, the scripture that we're using for this particular uh, teaching is found in 1 John 3 and 18. 1 John 3 and 18 says, Dear children, it is not merely say that we love each other. It's not enough to say that we love each other, but to show the truth by our actions. I can tell you as much as I want to that I love you, but in order to, God wants us to, to show our truth through our actions, through our actions. What are we doing to show each other that we truly love and care about each other's. I want to share three areas uh, that we can invest in, three areas that we're able to invest in others. The first area we want to talk about on today on how we can invest in others is through time. Time. We invest our time in others. Jesus invested time with those disciples, three and a half years he invested time with them. Now I'm gonna lump in because uh, I'm gonna lump in a couple of things uh, in that same uh, in that same point. What I want to lump in or, or include in in this particular point is this: He poured into them knowledge, wisdom, insight. Uh, he actually invested. Uh, himself in them. The whole idea was so that they could go and make other disciples. This was a three and a half years master's course. Uh, a school, a, 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 a university um, of, of discipleship. Jesus spent most of the, I, I, there's no documentation, there's no time clock, there's nothing that says how many hours that he spent teaching and 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 one on ones, and we just don't know. But just imagine, just imagine uh, how much time he invested in each and every disciple that he had. He gave them their system. Go, These are the twelve. He had uh, memory serves me correctly. A uh, hundred and something odd disi uh, disciples, but this was his what we call your core group, the twelve or the twelve disciples. Uh, that was his core group. These are the ones I'm referring to. So three and a half years, three and a half years, they walked with him, um, ate with him, talked with him. They traveled together. They uh, lodged together. They, you know, spent you know they 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 worked together. They uh, uh, ministered together. So I can only imagine the resources that Jesus poured into them, the, the time he spent, uh, you know, he'd share, uh, he, he'd share parables and a lot, uh, uh, one or two occasions they would come and ask for clarification, those kind of, so Jesus is investing time, okay, how much time do we invest in others, do, how much time are we investing with our friends? Are we wasting time with people who don't have time for us, but we carve out time for them? Now, what was Jesus' return on his investment for what he did uh, for 
those disciples in terms of investing time. Yes, I know for a fact that ultimately Jesus came to uh, as, as, as a gift, as, a, as the ultimate sacrifice uh, to save the world from their sins, die on the cross, uh, to, uh, to give us a path for righteousness, a path for redemption. Absolutely. Jesus Christ is our Lord. We thank God for uh, his journey. We give him praise, honor, and thanks for dying on that cross for our sins, uh, buried, crucified, rose on the third day with all power in his hands. Absolutely. I want to really look now specifically at the time that he spent pouring into his disciples. Number one, their lives were changed. Every single one of those disciples that he spent time with, some way, shape, or form, their lives were changed. Well, what about Judas? Yep, Judas's life was changed. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, it was changed. Uh, yeah. Uh, every disciple that uh, invested the time, Jesus took time to invest. The, here's the return. Their lives were changed. They were, they, they were never the same after their encounter with Jesus. Number two, they changed the world. They changed the world as a result of learning and sitting at the feet of Jesus. They became, they were disciples and they were promoted to the apostolic calling uh, to evangelize and save the world. They learned how to invest in others. Jesus said, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Reproduce, reproduce, reproduce. The fruit that I'm planting in you, I want you to plant in others. So basically we have uh, the Jesus in you is the Jesus in me, which is the Jesus in you, which is the Jesus in them. And we pass it on, pass it on, pass it on that's called discipleship. Discipleship is simply training others uh, or, or instructing others or uh, disciplining others uh, to uh, be uh, to learning and teaching and pouring into. That's what discipleship is. And we are uh, commanded by God to make disciples, make disciples. And this is because Jesus Christ himself invested in those disciples his time resources information wisdom everything that God downloaded him to give to his disciples this is the return on his investment the gospel was spread throughout the world and because he said go the year for into all nations Matthew 28 19 and 20 go into all the world to all nations and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So we, that's the great commandment. The great commandment is to go ye. What is going on right there? What's going on is we are returning the investment. This is the way Jesus Christ is benefiting from the investment that he made. What do we mean benefiting? The kingdom. Building kingdom. Kingdom building. That's the return on investment. Building kingdom. Getting people saved. Getting people off the streets. Getting people off of drugs and alcohol. Getting people into the sheepfold. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. That's the return on investment. The return on investment for this ministry is the harvest. The harvest is the return. The investments that we're making, the sacrifices that we're making. I am, um, I'm putting it out there. I, um, Facebook. I'm being trans. I'm having a transparent moment with you guys. I am investing my own money into this ministry. Why? There is a return on my investment. What is that return? Souls. Souls, souls. I'm not doing this to be popular. I'm not doing this to be, uh, you know, the next, the next T.D. Jakes or the next, uh, you know, uh, Joel Osteen. 
No, I'm doing this because there's somebody around the corner who has not had a meal today, who needs to know Jesus Christ, who one day may grow up to come, uh, to, you know, to come out of that tent and eventually come to the Lord and spread the gospel, make a difference. That may be the next T.D. Jakes. That may be the next, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Bishop Blake. You never know. So the purpose of me investing in my own ministry, you are crazy. Somebody told me that I was that crazy because I'm investing my own money into this ministry. And when I do that, I am looking for a return on my investment. I put a demand on the anointing that's on my life. And in that money, in, in the finances, that the, the what I'm investing, I'm investing in souls. Okay, So the first area that we're investing is, is time. Now we've lumped a whole bunch of stuff in there. Uh, but, that, but, but time, uh, we're investing time in one another. I'm investing time in that relationship or in that thing. There are other resources that I just went off on a tangent, y'all. But what, we're, what are we doing? We're building, ultimately, we're building kingdom. So Jesus invested time. Now, number two, what is another area that I can invest in others? Support. I can offer support to the people around me. I can support them as they go back to school. I can support them as they go through their particular court case, trying to get custody of their kids. I can support them uh, as they're going through changes on their job. I can even support them through their health crisis by visiting them in the hospital, uh, making sure that when they get home that their house is, their house is in order. Uh, you know, I'm going to hang out for a little bit to make sure that they're acclimated and they're comfortable. I'm going to call. Uh, I started to call my bishop, but I realized it's 5 o'clock in the morning. He's probably not up yet. So <laughs> I do those kinds of things. You know, I, wanna, I, I, I want to support you. I want to let you know that I'm behind you. And those are random acts of kindness, random acts of just, just showing support, a random card in the mail, uh, a cash app. You know, a, a cash app a, a deposit, ten dollars, five dollars. We don't have to go crazy and put like a hundred dollars on a person's account to let them know. If you send me five dollars right now, you have no idea how encouraging that would be to me. H H H Inglewood dollar sign. Um, no, I'm just saying you, that little push, that that little, just that little deposit, just that little thing. You know what? I just want to encourage you on today. I just want to be a blessing to you today. That's supporting somebody. That's going to turn someone's day around. I mentioned the other day, you have no idea. If you just go, uh, just go to, go to 7-Eleven, go to 7-Eleven, uh, get yourself a cup of coffee, get someone else's, uh, just get two cups of coffee. Walk outside of 7-Eleven and you see a person getting out of the car and just say, may I offer you this cup of coffee? Or you see someone standing next to you. Buy their coffee for them. Walk up to the register and say, I would like to buy two coffees. This mine and their coffee. I just want to be a blessing to you. I just want to encourage your day today. What are we doing? That's an investment. When we do random acts of kindness for others, we're making an investment. We're saying, Lord, I want them to be blessed just like you bless me. So here it is. It, uh, that's the second point. We want to support one another. We want to be a blessing to other people. We want to esteem others highly than ourselves. That's actually in our. Uh, that's actually in our next uh, in part two. That scripture is in part two. Let's take a look at intercession. I can intercede on your behalf as your friend, as your uh, accountability partner, as your prayer partner, as your pastor. I can pray for you. That's intercession. 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. We're just going to go ahead and pause right there. I'm, and this is the that we intercede one for another. Jesus Christ intercedes on our behalf. 
He goes before the Father, taking our sins, taking our, our, our filthiness, and He becomes what we call the propitiation for our sins. He is our go-between. Jesus Christ is our high priest. He it is because of Him that we have access to God. And it is through this awesome relationship that we have with Jesus that we can ask anything of him and he would do it. Jesus Christ uh, acts as our mediator between us and God. We as uh, uh, friends, as pastors, as evangelists, as counselors, as, as leaders, as, so, as, as sons, as daughters, as mothers, as fathers, we are interceding on behalf of somebody else who's around, close to us. The goal of this teaching, the ultimate outcome of these teachings is to get us to understand it's not about me, but if God puts someone in my life, let me do everything I can to cultivate that relationship, develop that relationship, and cause it to be a healthy connection and a divine connection. What can I do to strengthen this connection? When I pray for others, there are some awesome benefits. What is my return on investment? What is my return on investment that I offer petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving on behalf of others? What do I get out of spending time praying for you, believing for you, laying on the altar, laboring and travailing for you? What do I get out of it? I'm travailing for you. You told me about how things are really bad um, your health situation, I am on my knees just praying, I am fasting, I am just, just travailing before the Lord. I want to give you five um, things that I believe that God is going to reciprocate. These are the five returns on your investment that you make in others. What you pour out to others, God will pour into you. What you pour out into others, God will pour into you. If you pour out hope, God will pour hope into you. If you pour out encouragement, God will pour encouragement into you. If you pour out discord, uh, you pour out uh, word curses, you pour out uh, dissension, guess what's going to be poured into you? Need I say more? Number two, what you do for others, God will do for you. What you do for others, God will do for you. If you find yourself trying, doing your best to, uh, in, within your resources to help others, God will go into his resources and help you. What you do for others, God will do for you. Number three, when God blesses them, Guess who's blessed? You're blessed because you're a blessing to others. There is always, always, always a remnant of blessings that's going to come to you because you help somebody else. God is going to bless you for blessing others. God is going to bless you for blessing others. There are scriptures that bear me out. There are scriptures all over the Bible that talk about how when we bless others, when we go out of our way, when we esteem others above ourselves, how God will shower down blessings and meet our needs because we met the needs of others. Let's go, let, let's go Old Testament. Let's talk about the prophet uh, who, in the midst of a famine, goes to this lady's house and uh, here she is preparing her last meal for her son. And uh, she fix me up, fix me a meal. This is our last meal. Let me invest in the prophet. Let me invest in the prophet. And, and the story goes that she prospered. She was blessed. Her household was blessed because she gave the prophet something to eat. She hosted the prophet. She obeyed the prophet. She invested in the prophet. Oh, my God. What would happen if we invested our leaders? If we, like, for example, my bishop. What would happen if I just blessed my bishop? Bishop, where's your cash app? I, I need I need to have your cash out because every time I get some money, I need to go ahead and make sure I, I bless my bishop. I can bless my church. I can I can bless those. I want to bless my bishop. I want to bless up because that's the way the that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to bless 
our leaders. I know we tie to the church, but what about being a direct blessing to, to your director, what, your pastor? Bless your pastor. And what is God going to do? God is going to bless you. If you give a prophet, you're going to get a prophet's reward. I'm serious. You're going to get a prophet's reward. When you bless a prophet, you're going to get a prophet's reward. When you show support for others, you get behind what they're doing. God is going to get behind you and your vision. Too many times, and, 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 and sometimes I'll go to churches and just and just shake my head because you'll have guest ministers come up or you'll have uh, different people come up and they will tout their vision. They will just go into what God is doing in their church, in their lives, in their ministry. And it's all about, they, they came to advertise what they're doing. They came to let you know uh, their efforts and how their efforts are doing this. And, and they're this, they're anointing, they're this. I did not come to your church to talk about what's going on with Hope Harvest and Healing Ministry. You can go to the broadcast and find out what's going on with Hope Healing and Harvest Ministry. I came to your ministry to see how I can bless your ministry. I didn't come to advertise. I didn't come to promote. I didn't come to steal your members. I came to your church to sit quietly and find out and look around. Hmm. You know what? I have an extra one of those. Let me see if I can go ahead and be a blessing to her because I see she really needs one. Uh, I know there is one occasion, uh, and you guys know I play all over the city uh, sometimes, and sometimes I'll randomly uh, just kind of go go to a service or whatever, and and if there's no if there's no keyboardist, uh, I'll if there's no one playing the organ or something, I'll acknowledge them. Some people know I'm a musician. I'll just get up and I'll just, you know, go to the instrument. And this was some time ago. I remember uh, going to this one church and uh, the musician, musician uh, was not there and she actually mentioned, so she, I'm not sure. So I just kind of acknowledged myself as my musician and uh, went up. The instrument was not in the best condition. It was not in the best condition. And she was having a two-night revival. And so what I was able to do was, uh, and I told her I would be back the next night. Uh, I just so happened to have uh, an extra keyboard that I was blessed with. So what I was able to do the next night, I was able to bring my keyboard. Um, I just I just hadn't prepared to do all that that particular night. I was going in another capacity, but I was able to go um, bring bring that particular keyboard not only to play that particular service that night, but I left it there for her. And I blessed that particular ministry with a keyboard uh, because the other one, it was just, y'all, it was just towed. That thing was towed up. But that's what we do. What now, So what was my return on investment? God blessed me with another keyboard. God blessed me with another keyboard. I, someone just came and gave me, gave me a keyboard after I gave one to another church. Uh, so... I didn't look. I didn't look for anything in return, and then I got a cash out from uh, the very minister that asked me to come and go over there in the first place. So the more we invest in others, the more spiritual equity we accumulate. So in our time of trouble, we can withdraw from that account. We invest in others. We we're building equity. That that's building equity. So that's number five. Maybe go back to number four about showing support. I, I, cause I, I want to make sure that I drive this point home and we're going to close in prayer. When we show support for others, God will send someone to encourage us. We're, I'm going to back up and support your vision. I am seeing what do you need. I'm not going to somebody... Look, I'm not... Y'all know exactly how ministry works. We help one another. We help one another. We, 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 we uh, sow into each other. We're not in competition. When I am able to back your vision up, I'm not going to go to your church yapping about my vision. I'm going to go to your church thanking God for you. I come to support you. I came with a check. I came with a, a couple of dollars. I came with an extra keyboard. I came with maybe a speaker, uh, you know, a speaker, uh, you know, or something. Something that I see that you need. 
how can I be a blessing? See, that's the mindset. That's the mindset. We go pre-programmed to some of these programs thinking that we're going, we have an agenda. We go to these visiting churches with an agenda. I go looking to see how I can support what that ministry is doing. But you just started your church. That's the way this thing works. What I'm doing for others, others are going to help me with. I'm, I'm serious. If I can go to and help another ministry, you go in, there may be four people in the building. I make five. Let me be a part of what's going on there. Let me integrate myself into that. So, uh, and then I'm fine. Oh, I want to fellowship with you. Let, let's fellowship together. Let, let's, let, let's talk. Let's have lunch. And then that's a relationship. I can cultivate that relationship. I was blessed uh, in the last month uh, to meet two awesome, awesome pastors, awesome pastors. And now I'm connecting with them. Uh, they're awesome women of God. They, um, you know, they, they, they have awesome ministries. And I was just so blessed to be uh, able to go to the particular services and undergird and help them, uh, you know, with what they're doing. Now, they know that I have a ministry that I just started. Guess what they're doing? They're going to find ways, just as I'm supporting them, for them to support me. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know when you're having services. Let me know when you're doing revival. Let me know when your anniversary is. Let me know, you know how we can help you. What do you need? What do we have that we can do? What are we doing? I've, I've established a relationship, and I want to cultivate and strengthen that relationship with these new ministers. So I want to invest in other churches. I want to invest in other ministries. But you're already investing in your own church. That, that, that's, how, that's how crazy faith I got. I can invest my time. I can, inv I can invest in terms of my support. And I can also invest in interceding on behalf of those other ministries. When it comes to the people close to me, I want to spend time with my sister-in-law, with my brother, uh, you know, with my prayer partner, with my accountability partner, uh, you know, with with my, my, my buddy Earl. I want to spend time with them because they invest in me. When we spend time together, we strengthen each other. We support each other. Iron sharpens iron because we're spending time together. Also, I support them. I support them. What do you, if you're going back to school, I got an extra. I got an extra tablet. Let me let me bless you with the tablet. Let, let me, you know, how much are your books? I want to let me put something towards your books, or let me go ahead and and take you out to dinner to give you a study break. As a matter of fact, you study, have your kids come over to my house, and I watch your kids. Uh, I watch your kids on Saturday, so you can study or get some rest, or you and your husband can go out and do something fun. What am I doing? I'm supporting them. I'm supporting the fact that they, they need time off, they need rest, they need to recover. Uh, I'm supporting the fact that they just got out of the hospital, they can't do for themselves. What am I doing? I'm investing in that relationship. I'm investing. I'm, I'm, I'm supporting you. I'm supporting you. Even in your time of weakness, I'm supporting you. I'm writing letters on your behalf to the court because I know your character and I can attest to your character. And finally, I'm interceding on your behalf. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I have your name. I've got your name written down right here on my on my prayer board. Your name is right there. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your needs. I'm praying that God will bless you. I'm praying that what God would do for me. And those five those those five things that that that. And I'm not doing it because of these five things. These five things are as a result of me being obedient to the Spirit of God. I'm pouring into you, God's going to pour into me. I'm helping you, God's going to help me. When I show support for your vision, God is going to help me with mine. When I invest in others, the more spiritual equity I'm investing, what am I doing? I'm building my spiritual equity account. And when I run into problems, when I run into a situation, I can withdraw from that account because God clearly states what you do for others, God will do for you. If you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins today, I want to invite you uh, to come to Christ. Jesus Christ is our way maker. Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ wants to come into your life and save you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? I want to offer you 
Jesus Christ talking about on today. I want to offer hope in the midst of a crazy world. I want to offer you healing if you're sick uh, with the disease of sin. I want to offer Jesus Christ to you. I promise you, Jesus, your life will never be the same. Once you encounter Jesus, your life will never be the same. Lord, we thank you for those that are listening. Oh God, we just thank you, God, for uh, this lesson. So Father, show us ways uh, in part two. Show us ways that we can invest in others. Show us methods and things that we can do to make a difference in someone else's life. Teach me, Lord, how to put the needs of others above my own needs. Teach me, Lord, how to take the resources that you've blessed me with to be a blessing to other people. There's no accident that I got this extra money. It's not always to go straight to Amazon.com. <laughs> Sometimes it just needs to go into the hands of somebody else who really needs it. Why did I get three for a dollar? Oh, one for me, two for you. Yes, I understand, God. I understand that we are blessed to be a blessing to others. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray that your day is blessed. Go from this place knowing that we have an opportunity to invest in others. May God bless you on today.